Hi everyone, this is Sally from Artiselli, and today I'm going to show you how to crochet the hat and scarf that I showed you in the last video. This is what it looks like when it's laid flat. For this project, you'll be needing worsted weight acrylic yarn in the colors white and red, scissors, a yarn needle, and a crochet hook 3.5 millimeters. First, we'll start with a scarf since this is the easiest. You'll make a starting chain and you'll chain 50 in total. This means that it includes your starting chain. You can start with row 1. In row 1 you start with the second chain from your hook and you double crochet in each and every chain made. Your stitch count will be 49. Keep on making a double crochet throughout the entire row. By yarning over, going through your loop, yarning over, pull through two, yarning over and pull through two. If you are a complete beginner and don't know what a double crochet is yet, you shouldn't worry because I'll be making a couple of videos explaining the basic stitches I use in my videos and the double crochet will also be mentioned in depth there. Once you've finished all your stitches, you will chain one and cut your yarn. We're going to move to the second color. My contrasting color is white. Naturally, you can use any color that you'd like. You go with your hook in that very first double crochet made right above it. Like so. And then you pull your yarn through it. I always like to make a knot for extra security. And then you'll pull up a loop and chain one. Then you'll make a single crochet in each and every stitch made. Once you reach the final stitch, you chain one and turn your work. We're starting with the second row in white. In here, you single crochet once again in each and every stitch made. So right above each single crochet in white. Once you've finished your row, do not forget about that last stitch, because it's a bit tight. You chain one and you cut your yarn. This is what it's going to look like. You're done with the scarf now. Let's move to the hat. For the hat, we'll start by making a slip knot. Like this. And then we chain one. Then we yarn over and start with our first of six double crochets in the starting chain. So you yarn over, you go through the loop, yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through those last two loops on your hook. You'll keep on going until you have made six double crochets in total. This marks the end of your first row, which will give you a stitch count of 6. Once you reach the end of the row, you count your stitches. Once you have 6, you put your hook in that very first stitch made, pull up a loop and go through and through. This is a slip knot. You chain 1 and you'll start with your second row. It's very important for the second row that you start in the stitch where you made your slip stitch. So you do not skip this. You put two double crochets in that stitch and each and every stitch around. And by doing so, you have created an extra stitch. So it's like you have had, like you have made seven stitches. And by increasing in each and every stitch, you'll end up with a stitch count of 14 rather than 12. After having counted 14 double crochets, you slip stitch and chain 1. In the next row, it's important to notice that you're not going to work in that first stitch where your slip stitch is, but that you skip that stitch and go to the next one, where you work 1 double crochet, and then in the next stitch, you work 2 double crochets in 1, so that's an increase. You keep on working 1 double crochet, and then an increase throughout the entire row. 
because you'll increase seven times, you'll end up with a stitch count of 21. When you reach the end of the row, you'll make your last double crochet. And then your last increase. Slip stitch and chain one. It's time for row four. In row four, you'll work one double crochet not in the stitch where the slip stitch is but the stitch next to it that will be your first first stitch as you can see you work one double crochet one more double crochet and then in that third stitch you'll make an increase so two double crochet in one okay so you put one double crochet another double crochet in the next stitch and then two double crochets in one so an increase keep on doing the same for the rest of the round so this is my last set it's one one and then two The stitch can be rather tight by doing this the seam will be much less visible and then slip stitch and chain one in row five we work once again not in that slip stitch stitch but the stitch next to it work one 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 so three normal double crochets and then one increase so once more three double crochets in each of the following three stitches so one in each of the next three stitches and once you finish that third one you work an increase once again keep on going throughout the entire row in the exact same manner so one in each of the following three stitches one double crochet and then in that very last tight stitch you'll make an increase that's one and that's two in one then you'll once again slip stitch And chain one. It's time for row six. In row six, we'll put one double crochet in each of the following four stitches. It's two. So that's three. And that's four. And then we work an increase so this is your last set in which you'll work four in the next four stitches you'll work one double crochet so that's one that's two that's three and that's four And 
then you work an increase in that very last stitch. And normally you would make a slip stitch like so. But not in this round because this is our last row. We want a nicer finish. So you just pull your yarn and you cut your tail. You pull up your tail completely. So it's still attached to our last double crochet. You put your yarn needle, you attach your yarn needle to your tail, and then where we normally slip stitch, so that the very first stitch made, you'll put your needle around it, creating a fake stitch. Then we'll go back to the stitch where we came out of, so your last stitch made. Once you go through that stitch where you came from, you pull it slightly tighter and adjust the stitch and you work a bit. And then you're ready for the next step. So now we're going to grab onto our white yarn and that stitch where we went through with our tail, so not our fake stitch, but the stitch before that, in there, we'll pull up a loop in white and we're going to start with our first row in white. Go through that first that fake stitch that we just made and work up your first single crochet in there. And then work a single crochet in each and every double crochet of the last row. So in each and every stitch. And keep on going. Working a one single crochet in each and every stitch. So I just speeded up the process so that you can see what it's looking like while you're working on it. I like how the single crochet complements the double crochet, so that's why I choose that stitch. There are other options, of course, like craft stitch and everything, but this is more beginner friendly. Once you reach the end, as you can see, work one more single crochet into the place where you pulled up the loop, and then in that very first stitch, instead of slip stitching, you'll just start your new row by working one single crochet and then you keep on doing this same so one single crochet in each stitch throughout row two and three i'll meet you up at the end of row three Once you reach the end of your last row, this is what it's looking like. And make sure that you don't forget about that last stitch. Pull up your yarn, so pull up your loop, I mean. And then when it looks like this, you grab onto your scissors. And you'll cut your yarn. Pull the loop out of the stitch it in to your yarn needle make sure it doesn't split and then do the same as what you did with the red earlier on so you work your yarn around the next stitch and back into the stitch where it came from creating a fake stitch 
This will create a smoother finish than the slip stitch. As you can see, it's barely visible. Now we're going to work our yarn away by going through several stitches like this and then working on the inside of your work like this. Be mindful that it's not visible on the other side, so the outer side of your work. So while you sew your yarn through several stitches, be mindful to keep on checking whether it's not visible at the end or at the outside. So keep on going, working your yarn through and through, securing it this way, making sure that you can safely cut it without jeopardizing your work to come undone. Cut your yarn close to your work. We have two more tills left that we want to sew in now. Start with our red one. And you'll do the exact same thing. You'll work through your red stitches, however. So you go through your double crochets. Make sure it's not visible on the, out in, on the outer side of your work. Go through several double crochets. And then I like to go through that tiny little swirl made. And I like to go through several of those to secure my work. Once I'm content, I simply cut my yarn close to the work. And I'll do the same with the white tail. On my white tail, I simply, with my yarn needle, I go through all the stitches of the first row. Keep on going and then I'll end up vertically and then I'll cut my yarn. And at the very last tail in the beginning of your work, you will not touch yet because you'll be using that later on for your pom-pom. For the pom-pom we're using an unconventional way by twisting the yarn around our two fingers. I'll do that around 30 to 40 times. I think I went for 40 here. Once I'm content about the thickness, like this, I'll simply cut my yarn. Like this. And then I'll grab another strand of yarn around this big <laughs> and I grab my crochet hook I work the yarn around my fingers like this and then I make a knot make sure you're not putting your yarn around your dominant hand because then maybe it's more difficult to make a knot Thing is how I, for example, am so bad with doing things with my left hand. So I always put it around my left hand so that my right hand gets all the freedom to do it all. Then you get it off of your fingers and you make a knot, another knot to secure it. And then one more, by flipping your work and making one more knot this. You don't have to follow my pom-pom tutorial. There are plenty of pom-pom tutorials out there that are actually easier, but I, I guess I'm a bit lazy like that. I don't like to uh, use different materials to make my pom-pom. I just like to use my fingers. And this works for me, so I hope it works for you as well. Then you cut the loops that you have made that were going around your fingers. 
And be mindful not to cut those long tails. You'll keep those there. Make sure you get the tails back to one another by going or following the seam. Because there is a seam where the knots have been made. Get all those tails together. That one as well. So you have three tails right now. You actually have four, but my fourth is rather short, so it's not a big deal. Then you work your crochet hook right there where our six double crochets have been made in that starting chain. And then you work it through. And the reason why I left my red tail from the beginning is because I like to knot all of those white tails around it to secure my pom-pom. So I will knot all of them, make a good and tight knot, all of them like this. And then later on I'll think about how I'll sew the tails in. But this is what it looks like right now. And then what you do is you simply go around Just flattening it a bit with your fingers and then trying to make a rounder shape. And then from another angle. And then the lower parts as well. And right now I'm content with the way it looks. Don't forget to sew in the ends in the same way you have done with the other tails earlier on. And then you're as good as done. So I'd like to show you how it looks like on the penguin. Uh, this is Damagurumi I have posted before. You could see the hat onto the head for more security. Uh, you just do that in the same way you attach the parts of the penguin. For that I refer you to the video of the penguin itself. And that shows you how to attach the parts. So then you'll also know how to attach the hat. So I just wanted to show you the entire ensemble. So this hat and scarf aren't just made for the penguin. In fact, they can be used for any amigurumi. And I'll show you what other project you could use it for. I made this cute little snowman today. And it's actually going to be my next video, so if you haven't subscribed yet, then please do, and stay tuned for the next one.